Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, because you all asked for it, though I have no idea why, we're going to be talking about the newest album from Justin Bieber titled Purpose. You know, there's a running joke among a lot of music critics that even if you don't like Justin Bieber, he's easy enough to ignore that you don't need to care about Justin Bieber. And really, if you reflect upon the past six years, even during the initial buzz when he blew up, that's still true. Albeit, though, for completely different reasons. Now I should explain that. Let me preface this by saying that I've never really been one of those guys who's really hated Justin Bieber right from the get-go. It wasn't because he was making quality. It sounds like one time an eeny, meeny, miny, mo lover with Sean Kingston really were awful. It's a point where I've never understood why Usher hadn't contributed more to his creative development beyond just a co-sign and one okay song with somebody to love. But you know what? Even in Canada, Justin Bieber can be easily ignored. It wasn't like he was racking up huge hits outside of Baby and maybe Mistletoe, or in the former case, outside of a hysterically bad verse from Ludacris, generally kind of forgettable. Now, that seemed to change with the release of Boyfriend off his 2012 album, Believe, which I actually reviewed in my blog three years ago. And it wasn't even like that album was completely bad. Sure, As Long As You Love Me featuring Big Sean and Beauty and a Beat featuring Nicki Minaj were both pretty damn damn bad, and the album really had no clear creative direction where to take Bieber's music lyrically or sonically, it really was kind of transitional, but it did provide one legitimately excellent song with Maria that showed if Justin Bieber brought real dramatic intensity and tightness, something he cared about to the table, he could be a real pop star, one I could actually might even respect. And then for the next two years, Justin Bieber proceeded to squander all that potential, committing crime, shooting his mouth off, and acting like one of the most obnoxious teen idols to ever be given a microphone. Now this didn't really surprise me. The under current of petulance and ego had always leaked into his music, but I'd assume he'd eventually grow up or grow out of it a bit. But combined with the sloppy release strategy, the critically underwhelming journals that had no singles that really lasted on the charts, and no surprise there, it wasn't very good, I had no reason to really care about Justin Bieber anymore, especially when Justin Timberlake came back in 2013 and was so much stronger that year. Now that changed in 2015, with the release of Where Are You Now with Skrillex and Diplo, and Justin Bieber's first ever number one hit with What Do You Mean? And while neither of these songs were precise bad, and Justin Bieber seemed to have grown to his artistic persona, he'd also shown so little vocal personality on those songs that I had absolutely zero interest in checking out Purpose, especially as the lyrics on every single he'd released him is straying into some questionable territory. But hey, well, might as well give this guy one fair shot. And you all kept saying that you wanted this review, so... How does Purpose turn out? Well, it comes down to how and why you're listening to this album. If you're looking for a solid enough slice of modern house and trap-inspired instrumentals, or you just tune out the lyrics and just dance, there's a reasonable amount to actually like about Purpose by Justin Bieber. The problem is that this album isn't just intended to be a fun dance album, but more of a redemption art for Justin Bieber himself. And it's really questionable how much that works, if it works at all. So let's start with the stuff that actually does mostly work, which would be centered on the production and the instrumentation. The most notable collaborator across the entire album is Skrillex as a producer. And while there are some who probably miss his overblown dubstep days and consider this a real sellout, I actually like most of what he's doing here with textured percussion and some pretty decent melodic interplay. I'll give him this. He can craft some memorable hooks from vocal fragments, trap percussion, and an understated piano. He's got a real foundation to some good songs here. I just wish some of the synth leads that used for the choral hooks actually had more presence or better tones behind them. Because from the uh, I'll Show You to the Return of Where Are You Now, which originally showed up on the Jack U album, they sound like a chopped and distorted distorted kazoo and they get grating in a hurry. It fares slightly better with the horns, especially on the lower swell and trumpet on Sori, or the solo on Love Yourself. Personally, I found some of the darker trap flavored instrumentals work pretty well themselves, like in the brittle bass heavy groove of Company or the muted organs that eventually developed into the blocky edges of synth on No Sense. Even if I did find the uses of pitch shifted or warped vocals across this entire album was a little bit overdone, especially on Children, which was anchored its melodic hook in the goddamn chipmunk voice effect. Lovely. But you know what? Even despite that, I'll give this album's production some credit for actually sounding really quite organic. And most of that can be credited to the percussion, which ricochets off of a lot of the melodic grooves really well. And on songs like What Do You Mean can have some distinctive texture to it that it actually stands out. That, combined with a solid sense of mix depth, means that for as wispy and synthetic as some of these tracks can come across, there's enough to the instrumentation that can actually keep me interested. It's a shame that that's the majority of what keeps me interested, because we now have to talk about Justin Bieber himself. Now, remember how I said earlier that Justin Bieber is pretty easy 
easy to ignore? Well, you can say the exact same thing about his vocals because they're easily the least interesting part about these songs. Part of it is that Justin Bieber sticks to his low to mid range and rarely, if ever, gives an impassioned or raw performance. But even on the few moments he does, he sounds like a low rent Chris Brown, auto tune and all. And that's the other thing. When you build your melodies out of vocal fragments and then pile effects onto your singer with so many effects and vocal snippets, he's not going to stand out much within your mix. And even despite some good harmonies on songs like Company, it becomes a chore to really follow on to what's him. And it really doesn't help matters that Justin Bieber adds no vocal momentum to these songs. This record isn't exactly long for a pop album, but with the extended choruses and the fact that Justin Bieber's trying to sound as world weary and drained as possible, it feels like a long listen. And the guest stars don't help matters. Halsey contributes a little to no personality on the feeling. So many of Big Sean's references are just corny as hell on no pressure. And Travis Scott's heavily auto-tuned verse on no sense basically plays like future circa 2012, except somehow less interesting. But now, we need to talk about the lyrics in themselves and why this album actually really bothers me. See, throughout this album, you get the impression that Justin Bieber's looking back on the past couple of years of failed relationships and just running wild, and this is his big chance to do some serious reputation repair, a redemption arc of sorts, as I said before. Hell, it had to be why he included those two saccharine piano ballads at the very end, the latter of which is intended as a direct conversation with God, the only person that can judge Justin Bieber. See. Here's the thing, for this sort of theme to actually work, you need to buy that Justin Bieber is genuinely remorseful for what he might have done, which he never really says on this album. And right from the first track, you get a lot of evidence that that might not be the case with him. Well, it's because of the lyrical tone and how whiny it comes across. Yes, Justin Bieber, we know you're not perfect and you'll inevitably show us, mark your words, but it's not until sorry you get anything close to an apology. And even then, it's framed at his partner being angry at his honesty and that there's no innocent in this game for two. It's full of half measures, and frankly, the songs get better when Justin Bieber just focuses on finding new relationships like on Company, or stewing in frustrated inertia and not pushing this girl like on What Do You Mean, or putting his life back together on Life's Is Worth Living. And even then, it's got a bit of a martyrdom complex and ego that can get a bit insufferable. A lot of people have highlighted Love Yourself as the biggest hole in Justin Bieber's redemption argument, pretty nasty kiss-off track co-written with Ed Sheeran paired with a muted guitar line that's actually one of the better melodies on the album. But for as douchey and bitter as that song is, not only is it kind of well written, it feels far more honest and real. Not just in its detail, but in its personality. I can buy Justin Bieber making the song. Of course, the framing of the song like this is generally cheery sing-along, just puts a bad taste in my mouth that doesn't feel right. But I'd almost prefer it over the pseudo-inspirational children that tries to be anthemic and doesn't really have the front man delivering to pull it off. But really, it's the title track that exasperates me the most here. It ends with Justin Bieber monologuing of how you have to keep on trying hard, but you're not always going to be in the best position to make good decisions, and you know what? If that happens, don't be so hard on yourself about it. In other words, all this album is a matter about accepting responsibility. That's what Justin Bieber needed to do, and by pretty much evading all of that, it comes across as just completely unbelievable. Forget any of the morality or the judgments on what he's done. If he's going to set up the entire album to show remorse, and then show nothing all that genuine and brush it all aside, I'm sorry, I can't respect that. So yeah, yeah, as a whole, I didn't care for this album, I'm sure you can tell. Justin Bieber is rapidly becoming the sort of pop star that makes electronic background music, and not in a good way. His vocals are not impressive, the production is pretty good, but nothing extraordinary that blew me out of the water, and the lyrics felt increasingly hollow and disingenuous every time I listened through this album. It's not a bad record, I get why people like it, which means it's getting a 5 out of 10 for me, a light one, but it's not a good record either. If you're a fan, you find Justin Bieber's personality more interesting, you'll probably like this more, but otherwise, you're safe going back to just ignoring them. It's surprisingly easy these days. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I will try to give them a listen. Got a busy couple weeks before the end of the year. Till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.